Hey, what's up, everybody? Justin Ochoa back with another episode of the Gym Sessions podcast. Today we have on Ty Harris from the Connecticut Sun of the WNBA, and we are talking about all things basketball. We talk about her recruiting from high school, how she ended up at South Carolina, funny stories about Don Staley in South Carolina, talk about her WNBA draft experience, her WNBA career, and all the things that she's working on to just get better as a player on and off the court. So make sure you tune in to this one. It's a great conversation with Ty. Hope you guys enjoy. Ty Harris, welcome to the show. Appreciate you joining me. Of course. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So we missed you on season one. So we had to run it back, get you on season two. Um, a lot has happened since then. We've started yeah. the WNBA season, finished up your your um, overseas season. Um, mm-hmm. How have you been since since leaving Indy and, and starting up year four? Is this year four for you or year three? Yeah, four. It's crazy. Right? It goes fast. You're it getting old fast. on me. Nah, I'm still <laughs> in my rookie contract, so we're still young. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> That's how athletes are measured. I'm either right. on my rookie contract or my second, third, or fourth deal. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but I've been good. I mean, I don't know. When's the last time I saw you or last time I've been in Indy, honestly? Um, probably like when, a couple months? Probably when we shot my um, Under Armour commercial that I let you be a part of. <laughs> your your two-second clip? <laughs> Were you even in me. or was it just your voice? <laughs> <laughs> Not just the voice. Oh, you hear me in the background. I was like, yeah, good job. Good work. <laughs> Man got a full get up, unarmored clothes, everything just for voiceover. Oh, my goodness. Hey, it's all good. <laughs> you already got me crying. It's, and <laughs> we're, we're two minutes into the episode. I got, I'm. No, we got to say something. We got to say <laughs> Nah, but I've been good. I mean, I've been training, uh, working out, just trying to figure out everything because it is a new team. Um, I was on Dallas for three years before, and then Connecticut, new place, new team, new coaching staff, a new system, and kind of just figuring out with them. I've been on FaceTime with uh, Coach Steph, our head coach, and watching film with her before the even season and training camp even started, trying to get acclimated with her, trying to get familiar with her. And then training camp started, and it goes quick, (laughs) literally so quick. It's crazy. I'm not sure when this is going to drop, but – we're recording this, whatever today is, like the 28th of August, I right. think. And yeah. we got, what, like a month left of the regular season, if that, and then playoffs? If that, out. I think we got like four more games left and then playoffs. That's crazy. That's crazy. So um, let's jump into your like your basketball journey. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, I know you really well, but some of the listeners might not know you or be familiar with you. Um, and I like your journey because we've talked about this in the past. Like, it's not like you had um, – you know, like all the clout growing up right. or, you know, you didn't have right. mixtapes when you were in fourth grade, <laughs> that type of stuff. Um, you went to a small high school here. Talk yeah. about, you know, just your your youth development, like what went into you choosing a school like Heritage Christian and kind of like how you grew up playing. Mm-hmm. So I started playing basketball when I was like four. Uh, I always been like shy to myself type of person until I get to know you and then my goofiness comes out, but mm-hmm. I went to Heritage because one coach Steph was there, and she was my AU coach. And just how AU was, I played for a small organization out of Indy, and like I never played on the Nike EYBL or the Adidas Gauntlet when that was lit and stuff like that. It was always just like with them because they was like my second family. So I stayed with them, and she got she was an assistant coach at Heritage. So I was like, it was a no brainer for me, and. I just don't like the public schools. You know how that be, a little mm-hmm. political over there. So I went there for four years, loved it. I mean, we had a great career. We had, I think, like our starting five plus one, like at least six or seven of us went to college basketball. Not everybody finished, but at least everybody got the chance to go D1. So that was pretty good. And I think our team was ranked like ninth at one point in high school. Yeah, you guys nationally. Are crazy. No, yeah, no. Crazy. So that was good. The journey was nice, but that kind of ultimately, ultimate, what's the word? Ultimately. ultimately. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, there you go. Like, led me to go to Heritage Christian, even though it was like a private school and it was like predominantly Christian and like all that. I didn't even know. Like, when I walked through, like, had our classroom walks or whatever, they're like, oh, you have a theology class. And I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> every day I had to go to theology and we had like, 
mass every Wednesday or Thursday. So that was kind of like a shocker to me, but it was nice, something different. And I like to try, I really don't like to try different things, but when it happened like that, it was nice and it worked out really well for me. Mm -hmm. Was that a situation where like you knew you didn't want to go to a public school and just was looking at different private schools, prep schools, charter schools, kind of like the off Mm -hmm. outside the box type stuff and just landed on heritage? Honestly, no. Like, I don't even know how the discussion even started or like I know in eighth grade we had like you had to have like a high school tryout towards the end of the summer. And um, it was like tryout for HSC. And I just like didn't go. But my best friend went because she plays basketball, too. And like everybody was asking her, like, so where is Ty going? Like, And I didn't know. Honestly, it was kind of like I didn't really care too much about it. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to hoop and I wanted to be on a good team. So when I figured out I was going to Heritage, everybody were a little salty and mad about that, but I didn't care for it. (laughs) You had a crazy career at Heritage. You guys won, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know all the accolades, but you guys won Mm -hmm. like multiple state championships. Uh, You were All-American multiple times, Miss Basketball um, candidate, I guess, which is crazy because I feel like any other year you would have won that. And I feel right. like just looking at who won Jackie Young your year, you, right. it's like, okay, to her though, that's, for, that's yeah. much respect. Number one draft pick in the WNBA, went on to do mm-hmm. great things in Notre Dame and beyond. So it's like you can't really be too mad at that. But mm-hmm. it's also like a big deal in Indiana to win or be um, considered for that award. Like what, what were some of your accomplishments – Coming out of high school that I missed, like, we'll talk about the resume a little bit. Yeah, uh, I think, so, we won three in a row. We run two of them in 2A, and then the last one was in 3A. And I wish, if we, if I had another year, that next year they went to 4A. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you we would have won, won the 4A, too. Facts. With my team that we had, we definitely would have won the 4A. But uh, my freshman year, when we lost, we uh, we lost that semi-state. I forget the team. I think it was modern day, some team up in Evansville, I think. Mm-hmm. And that's who we ended up losing to in my state. But other than that, we won it all. And like I said, we were ranked nationally ninth at one point. Um, I think I hold a record for scoring at Heritage. I think. I think I still do. And assists, I think, as well. And um, like you said, Miss Candidate for Miss Basketball. But guess what? They told me I was – Fourth runner up, and I know that's cap. They had Jackie who won it, yeah, Lindsay Cassaro, okay, Kristen Spoiler, and then me. That was my like, mm. that was our little rivalry right there, which they were all really good. Like, we yeah. were, I ain't gonna hold you, that class right there was really good. That's so. a fire class. That's it. I didn't but know. You know, Kristen went to Butler, right? I think I follow her on yeah. Instagram. We like, yeah, randomly, you know, how you know somebody but don't really know somebody, right. It's right, like the right. basketball the, community. Right. Yeah, in that show. <laughs> <laughs> and then Lindsay Casaro, she went to Ron Colley High School and then yep. she ended up going to UCLA for a little bit. And I don't know where else, but UCLA, UCLA but I mean, hey, that was I'm some giving, good group of girls right there. I'm giving so you the runner. I'm mad at it. I'm giving right. you the unofficial runner. Appreciate runner-up. you. Appreciate <laughs> you. Appreciate you. Appreciate so you. let's talk yeah. about obviously you left high school. Just crazy resume. Um, mm-hmm. What was your recruitment like? Talk about your process. Um, and, you know, obviously South Carolina is where you ultimately went, but where were, where was like your top four kind of other schools you considered and why did you choose SC? Yeah. So, okay. Recruiting was a lot. I actually hated talking to coaches. And it's crazy because – now I talk to, like, college coaches, and they say, like, the kids, that's all they want. Like, if you don't show them attention and love, mm-hmm. then they're not going to go there. For me, it was opposite. Like, I wish they didn't call my phone. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad, you know how my dad is. I know Tui is going through it now. I even be texting. I be texting, like, I'm the mom and dad. Like, <laughs> you better call these schools. But my They're dad, just... he made me, like, a spreadsheet of, like, schools and, like, what time to call everybody. And it was, like, cool, too, because, like, you know how you get them letters? Like, it was just mm-hmm. letters, literally just the questionnaires. But, like, everybody had their own, like, like design to it and stuff. So yeah. I used to keep all the letters, and I had to, like, post it on my wall and stuff like that. And um, so calling was crazy. I had to have a spreadsheet. I had to have a routine. 
And then this was a time where, like, they they would call me in school mm-hmm. and, like, when I'm working out and practice. Like, it was getting OD. There was really no rules for real at this time. So, like, my dad helped me with that. <clears throat> and then I didn't know where I wanted to go. I was, like, one of the last people to commit because I just, like, I had no idea. I'm, I was a homebody. I didn't want to leave. And I ended up going to South Carolina, which is like nine hours away, which was crazy <laughs> to me. Yeah. Because I was like, I don't want to go too far. I was leaning towards like Indiana or uh, Purdue. Purdue was heavy because there's like kind of far, but not too far. Right. And they were in the Big Ten. So that wasn't too bad. But um, my top four would have been like Michigan State. I liked, uh, who else I liked? I like Iowa because the coach. Which is crazy now that we say, like, the talk about South Carolina, Iowa is crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like Indiana. Who else did I like? I like Notre Dame until they, yeah, I liked, I liked, let's put the liked Notre Dame. Uh, I think that's about it. It wasn't too many schools, but, like, honestly, South Carolina got my attention because when I went on a visit, it was just something like it just hit me. Like it just felt like a family atmosphere. And then like Dawn, she was just so real, so cool. And uh, Coach McCray, she uh, she was my recruiting person. So she kind of was like, "You are a missing piece." Like they had all the pieces to get there. I think they got to the Final Four one year and then the Elite Eight another year. And um, she was basically just saying like, "I'm the missing piece to make it." And I committed there. I It was kind of after finals, too. Like, we had finals in high school or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know what? I'm about to go to South Carolina. Like, I'm over it. Like, I'm tired of waiting. I'm tired of talking to coaches. I'm just going to commit. So, like, after finals, I get done taking my test. I go in the comments area, and I'm like, hey, Coach Stanley, like, I'm committing. <laughs> and it was just like, that's it. <laughs> that's it. She was like, oh, my gosh. Like, she was happy or whatever. And, like, after I hung up the phone, it was like, all right, well, time to go to the next class. Like, yeah, it was just... It was like after some, this. Right. <laughs> some <laughs> random stuff, like nothing too crazy. But yeah, that's how that went down. So I know you got to have some funny Don Staley stories. Like there's <laughs> got to there's gotta be at least one uh, we can we can get the ball rolling with. Like what is what's I guess I could give you like a, you know, a time frame because I, I mean, you were yeah, there for yeah, four yeah. years. What was like the craziest thing within the first month or so on campus that happened where you're like oh shit like Don Staley's my coach yeah so honestly it never really hit me for real until like I talked to outside people who would be like oh you're going to South Carolina oh you're playing for Don Staley and I'm like yeah like what's what's the big deal like why are everybody <laughs> freaked out about it so geek and I was like oh I loved her playing to get like watched her play coach da 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 and I'm like, oh, she was nice like that. Like, I really did not really know for real until I got there how nice as a player, coach, she was crazy. decorated woman she is. I'm like, this is crazy. So um, that kind of hit me. And then, like, just seeing the – how she built South Carolina. So, like, I used to be in her office sometimes, and we would just talk about the past. And she was saying, like, there was probably 500 st- people in the stands when she first got here. And she was with this X amount of people, and she only had this. And now to see, like, we're the number one attendance in the nation for, like, the last six years. And, like, seeing all the fans, the fan base, the people that come out just to see her, support her, is crazy. Yeah. The impact she has is crazy. So that was my big thing. But the funny thing, I mean, I could say we used to be heavy. Oh, my really? junior year. Junior, so, I think it was like in the sophomore junior, like we'd be so heavy. She would tell anybody this too. Like she, she used to have interviews and she used to tell people this. And I was like, I think it's because we were a Taurus. Like we're both Tauruses. So we're both stubborn and we're both bullheaded and like already in our ways. Like we rocked with each other so hard, but like <laughs> Taurus then we butted heads too. So I remember we was going to Thanksgiving tournament in uh, St. Thomas and like we played Indiana. We lost. And we were, like, the number one recruited team, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Like, we lost to Indiana. I'm like, how ironic that I lose to my home state team. Like, that happened. And I played bad, too. So, we go in the film. She's going 
in on us. She started with me going crazy on me. Like, I didn't even... She's, like, behind me. I didn't even turn around. Like, I'm just looking at the screen like, oh, my goodness. Like, and she was telling... She's like, I knew I got through her when she, she didn't even look at me. Like, I knew that's when she's listening. And, like, that's serious. Like, if I get to turn around and now we going back and forth, like, it's over with. But I'm yeah. sitting there listening, taking it in, saying... She was saying, like, the game we lost, it was your fault, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, all right. So we go to practice. Usually after practice, we have a meal. They have a meal for us. I see, like, the assistant staff people come in with, like, the meals and stuff like that. We get done with practice. It was a hard practice. Everybody's already in the mood. Like, we just got chewed out of them and stuff like that. Like, we're looking for our meals. The names on the sandwiches and meals are the staff and the coaches. We're like, where's oh. ours? Don, <laughs> Don came through. was like, y'all don't get no fucking food. Like, y'all don't deserve this. The way y'all was playing. Y'all don't get to eat. I'm not feeding y'all, blah, blah, blah. We're all just like, what? Not you taking a meal from us. She didn't want us to get no smoothie, no sandwich, no nothing. Like, And then, like, the practice gym was, like, 45 minutes away from our hotel. Like, we're just mad, starving, while they just eating and chilling. That had to be the funniest thing ever, though. That's yeah. good. That's good. But, the, I mean, from a coach's perspective – Y'all probably played your ass off the next day, the next oh, yeah. game, like Went crazy, just dominated that, everybody. and then and then we played Baylor and uh, beat them, and then we won like the championship and all That's that. Good. Yeah, that's good. I like that. So you said like when they were recruiting you, um, they were saying you're the missing piece, right? And like yeah. that that was true. Y'all came in, if I remember right, you won the national championship freshman year, um, yep. and started most of that year. Um, talk about like. What is it like, obviously, to to win a national championship in college, doing it your freshman year, but then how does that, like, set up the rest of your career when you set the tone for that being the thing, the standard, um, yeah. your freshman year? Yeah. So, actually, like, because after we won it, somebody tweeted, like, Ty has always been winning because we had won that three state championships mm-hmm. up until that yeah. point. So, it was crazy to see that, but, like, after, like, once you get to your senior and junior year, that's when you try to, like, get nationally known for college, of course. Mm-hmm. And uh, to go back a little bit, like, there's this McDonald's All-American game and the Jordan Brand game, which is kind of like a, I guess, like a benchmark to where you at in your career, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you try to use that as a measure, basically. A lot of people want that accolade. And so, like, I remember being at my sister dance competition in Tennessee and, like, the McDonald's All-American show was coming on to see, like, who been selected to play. And so I'm watching, I'm watching, I'm watching it. And my name didn't get caught. So, like, now I'm like, whoa. Because at one point throughout high school, like, I was top 10 in high school. And then, like, once EYBO and all that extra stuff started playing playing into it, I dropped to, like, 25. Because I never played in EYBO. Like I said, like, I always played with the local AAU team and then, like, my parents couldn't really afford to take me to camps and stuff like that to get exposure or pay for like highlight reels and stuff like that. So I kind of was kind of like, whoever yeah. comes see me, come see me type stuff. And so I didn't make McDonald's or I didn't make Jordan brand. So like I was real mad. I actually was crying that night when I didn't see my name. Cause like that was like, as a high schooler, that's what you look up for right. to, right? So I didn't get that. And I was like, dang, I was kind of just like not encouraged, kind of lost a little bit of my confidence, but my trainer, Derek, he was like, this is when I started meeting him, too, and started working out with him. He was like, just use this as f- fuel to your fire and um, rock out after that. So, like, just worked out after that. And then uh, USA came around, and I made a USA team. And most of the people on the USA team are um, McDonald's American. Right. So, like, we're sitting one time, like, uh, over in uh, Peru or whatever, and everybody's talking about, like, the McDonald's All-American stuff like that. And I'm like, yeah, nah, I didn't make that team. Like, I don't know what y'all talking about. I ain't getting none of that gear. And they was like, no way. Like, how are you? Blah, 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 blah. So I like, I remember that specifically. And I was like, yeah, nah, I never made that. So like, I always tell people like, one one door closed. Like, don't let that shatter everything. Like, it's just a speed bump. Right. You can work through adversity and stuff like that. So that happened. Used all that. Won three state championships. Went to freshman uh, I wasn't starting at first, and then Christmas break came around, and like Don was like, "All right, y'all, we haven't seen you before. Like, we get to practice." And I had no idea what she was gonna say, and she was basically saying like, "We're gonna make a change. Ty's gonna be starting," 
and I was like the first freshman she ever started in her coaching career or whatever. So it was kind of like a big deal. But like when she said that, I was like, oh, shoot. Like what's about to happen? Yeah. <laughs> and like the first practice after that, like, you know how coaches be like, just says the point guard, the starting point guard, they'd be like, Ty, get your team out here. Like basically yeah. starting five. Yeah. So he said that, and like one of my team was like, it's not her team, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, ah, hell, what did I get myself into? Like, I'm quiet. Like, my freshman year, I'm still just trying to pick out stuff, trying to work through things, and this is happening. So we like went through like a team boot camp. Like, we had like a four hour team session where we kind of just laid everything down, described everybody's talent, what we need them for, roles, and stuff like that. And after that, we was rolling because I'm pretty sure like we had one of the worst records before we got into the uh, March Madness and we ended up winning. So it was crazy how that all that even worked because mm-hmm. it was like a lot of craziness, a lot of adversity, adversity we had to go through to even get to that point of winning. And that happened. So it felt good. That's crazy. Yeah. I, yeah. But like that's cool that that Don and the coaching staff had that confidence in you um, and the boldness to like just pull a move like that, yeah. Dress it as a team, and and then it pays off. Then it's like, mm-hmm. oh shit, that just builds a buy-in for the team even more. Because for the next year, it's like, okay, all the re- returning players on that team are gonna be like, Don, she knows what she's doing. Like we right. we about to just follow her blindly, and she's gonna right. get us there. So, um, you again, I can't remember all the resume stuff, but you're. <laughs> I think first in assists in South Carolina, top 10 in assists in the SEC ever. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the best, like, records. I think your winning percentage is, like, 84% over a four-year span. You lost, like, 17 games or something like that. What? <laughs> what? This is not normal. This is not a normal experience. Right. Like, what are you now, as you transition to the WNBA – where Mm -hmm. obviously you're having success and you've been on good teams, but like Mm -hmm. what is kind of your expectation after your senior year, which is a COVID year um, Mm -hmm. going into the draft, like what type of feelings were you having? What kind of expectations do you have for yourself at that time? Like kind of where's your head at during that time? So, I mean, I feel like my career has been super interesting just because we started in the wobble and the COVID and how everything Mm, played out. Like, I didn't get to finish my senior year in college or, like, the March Madness. And we were ranked number one at that time. So, I felt like I was going to – You guys are going to win that for sure. I felt like I was going to start with a national championship and end with a national championship. But, obviously, that didn't happen. But, um, so, like, draft day, I mean – Going back to just USA, like, when we was talking about it my senior year, I was at USA with a bunch of uh, other players from the different colleges, and they were talking about mock drafts and stuff. And so I'm looking, I'm looking, and a mock draft has – this is before my senior year started, actually, too. Um, a mock draft has me third round, second to last pick. So I'm like, whoa. Which, <laughs> and which, then, like, another – Not to cut you off, which is, like, you're going to get to training camp, like, week two. In the WNBA. Honestly, you know what I'm that, saying? Like, maybe that's, training camp day yeah, two. That's honestly, what it is. Like, like, in wave. Yes. And then so, like, and then another mock draft didn't even have me on at all. So I'm just like, okay, here we go again. Another round. Yeah. You know, hear here this again. So my senior year go, and I'm, like, one foot in, one foot out, obviously, because I'm trying to enjoy my last year. And then, but I'm also thinking about next year. Mm-hmm. And so, like, my coach, Boyer, assistant coach, she was basically like, Ty, like, you're good. We got you. Just focus on the season. Enjoy your last year in college. Like, we have your back, basically. And that's another reason why I chose South Carolina, because Don and her coaches have connections. And so, basically, they were speaking to some of the WNBA uh, coaches and, like, just asking for information here and there, just of, like, what they thought about me. And that made me feel better about the season and about what I was doing. So fast forward, season get cut short or whatever, and draft day is up. And now I'm like top 10. So I'm going first round top 10. So that made me feel better. So right. um, what ESPN did, they sent like a kit out to everybody that's like top 10, supposed to be top 10. And um, they made you like live stream it from wherever you was doing your little draft day party at since mm-hmm. everything was closed down. So for me, it was kind of hard because it was like, I didn't really know if I was going to, 
be that person to be live stream. And then once they sent the kit and email and everything, I was like, okay, now I really got to dress up. <laughs> <laughs> and by this time, like stores is closed. Everything's closed. Like it was like in the beginning of COVID stage, like everything's locked down. So um, I tried to order some stuff, but like the, it was delays on packaging and all that. So like mm -hmm. nothing came in time. It was the day of the draft in the morning. I'm like, all right, I got to go to Target. Target's open. So me and my mom go to Target real quick. We find a quick outfit, put it on. Mind you, I put that shit on real quick in just a little amount of time. Facts. <laughs> but Facts. Uh, we had to do that, live streamed it. I had a couple of my family members there. It was a great day. Uh, but it was a wild day. It, it was a lot of emotions. It was kind of like my dream finally had came true. I had to do a lot of interviewing over Zoom like with Team G4 mm -hmm. and just teams that were thinking about picking me up or whatnot. And then I got picked up seven. So, yep. yeah. So side note, we got to yeah. talk about the style. You know, I, I think you're, <laughs> you're one, of, you're one of the drippiest chill. in the league for sure. Nice little chill. Yeah. yeah. I, I like the vibes. I, I see the mm -hmm. tunnel picks. I like what I see. Um, we'll, we'll come back to that soon, right, but I just right. wanted to throw that in there. I, I, I do like the style. That. I see. I see you <laughs> posting. I, I'm. I'm feeling. You it. know, you're one of the top dr best dressed trainers <laughs> out too. I told you this. You need to get on TikTok and make a get ready with me. What's best crazy? Down. This now people are gonna be looking at me crazy because they don't know. So I just got done training, so uh -huh. I have a workout tee on and shorts. So this is not a good advertisement for me. Not because today. <laughs> I'm, I'm in workout attire, but yeah, Ty, take her word for it. I, I yes. really, I really do this. You can top to ten Instagram. Not even top ten, top two, and not two. Top two, not two. I'll take that on my own podcast. <laughs> I'll take that. But Holy. so you're drafted seventh. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of emotions. That's awesome. Obviously, you're happy. Mm -hmm. um, but then you're also like, damn, I got to go play in this bubble. Yeah. And, it's, yeah. you know, let's be honest, like it wasn't the best situation. No. Um, I mean, I don't think any bubble is, but especially uh, I was working with a couple other WNBA players at the time. And I'm just like, what the fuck they got y'all out here doing? You know it's, it's a, it was so much. I mean, like to even get into it, like we had so much testing. You had to test every day. You had to stay in like the ING Academy. Couldn't yeah. leave ever. Like we had a delivery service was on ten. Like on ten, food charges was crazy. Food charge the man DoorDash. That's how DoorDash they were going stays crazy open. Crazy oh on us. <laughs> I a uh, side note: we're gonna have Steph on uh, probably in a couple of weeks, but I'm she got traded in the bubble, and I want to yes. know the story behind that because yes. that shit is unheard of. Which that's is crazy. another thing. Which is which is not too. It's bad, actually though, bad because you don't have to move. She just right went down and the hall. Stay there. Literally, yeah. just change loops. Here you go. I take this loop. <laughs> change color team. Still got the same house. Cool. We're good. Got a new key card, and you're good. But that's good. what I'm saying. Like, I feel like the bubble wasn't too bad for younger players, but maybe for older players that are already right. established and who already yeah. know like the ropes of traveling and doing your own thing and have families and stuff. For sure. I get that, but for like for me, the wubble was just like college to me. Like, yeah. literally, I had it. Like, I stayed in my little box. Like, mm -hmm. went to went to uh. Where I stayed, went to practice, went to the game, came back. And yep. I feel like, I mean, like, college, you have your party days here and there. But, like, other than that, like, once you're in the grind of the season, it's literally class, yeah. practice, tutoring, whatever you got, and then back to the crib. Facts. So that's what it, like, it was cool for me because, like, I'm not, I don't need too much. But for other people, I see what it is. And But, like, to your point of getting traded, people rather pick up people who are already in the bubble, who don't have to go through all yeah. that testing. Yep. So, like, if you did get waived or dropped, it's like you have a good chance of getting picked up again. Yeah. That was a good thing about that. Facts. So, you come out, you played three years uh, in Dallas. Um, mm -hmm. Had a solid, solid uh, first three years. Yeah. But what are some – now, we're going to talk about My overseas, idea. too. We're going to talk about overseas, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. But I want to talk about, like, initially just in the WNBA, what were, yeah. like, the, the changes that you had to make to your playing style – to be able to fit, right? We talk about the, the WNBA is what, 144 players? Mm -hmm. It's 12 roster, roster spots, 12 teams. Like, a lot of quality players that, are getting cut. That, so you have to that, figure out a way to stick. Like, how did yes. you 
mold your game around like whatever role you were asked to play in yeah. Dallas specifically? Yeah. So um, I knew coming in, like there weren't really too many like purebred point guards. Mm-hmm. And like with Sue retiring not too long ago and just other, other stuff like that, I feel like that was my role coming into it. And I feel like my IQ of the game and just coming from Coach Staley, just having that championship standard, just the winning standard, and just from who she was as a point guard and, like, the knowledge she gave me, I feel like I was going to be pretty good at that. Um, Like you said, there's only 144 spots, 12 roster spots, 12 teams. If that, I mean, some people already only have 11. We have 10. So I feel like there's really only, like, 25 spots maybe every year at this point because you already got you know there's all-stars who are ever, who are already going to make it mm-hmm. you know there's some people who already got a spot you know like there's really only three or four spots that really four teams might need honestly true true and that's honest very true so like it's really not that many spots it's not 144 spots at all but i mean that just goes to show like how cutthroat this league is and just Finding your niche and your role and what you do best is probably, like, the best advice I can give to anybody. Because, like, everybody was the All-American. Everybody was that superstar coming out of college to get to this point. I mean, this is why this is the best league in the world. So. Talk that shit. (laughs) Honestly, though. (laughs) So, like, you got to find what you do best and that whatever role you need for that team specific and try to make perfect that, honestly. And if you can do that, I feel like. You can have longevity in the league. Yeah. So a couple of questions, follow-up questions on that. Mm-hmm. I'm a big proponent of I think there should be an expansion. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying I know how to. I'm not saying mm-hmm. I know the logistics. I don't give a shit. I'm a fan. Right. Figure it out. Right. right. Four teams. I think that you could safely put four to six teams in the WNBA with no drop-off in talent to the point where – one of the expansion teams would would be competitive to make the playoffs. Like, right. like I mean, there's I, good players that are not I in agree. the league. I agree, and that that just goes back to like the cutthroat of the spots because they're not there's not 144 spots. Right, you already know some people are already making. Some people it. are locked in already. And you got you still got vets and stuff like that. And now the money is playing to it, the cap salary is playing into it too. Like people are getting cut just because they don't got enough money to keep you on the team. Yeah. Or people are getting cut because, like, they're just – there's not enough spot. They got yeah. six vets, and they got five other four years, and, like, it, they have experience over you. So it's, like, it's hard. And that's why, like, a lot of rookies coming out this year is, like, oh, they should be on a team, they should be on a team. But it's, like, y'all really don't know everything that goes into it. <laughs> like, where, from, though? From like, who are you going <laughs> like, to take off? Yeah. Who are you going to take off? Yeah. So it's kind of hard, but like I do agree. Like if you add three or four teams, there's not there's not going to be a drop off because I see plenty of people yeah. overseas, plenty of rookies coming up out of this league that can and can grow to be where we are now. You 100%. know, so yeah. yeah, yeah, that would be that would be cool. Again, I don't know how the logistics work. Yeah, I don't know so either. That's so. not my job. Somebody way smarter hey. is in charge of that. Right. But I'm right. talking like, man, there, there. I'm telling you, there's so many good players. Like, so we'll talk a little bit about overseas, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And we'll we'll kind of go back and forth between that, but tie overseas versus WNBA tie is different. It's different, right? Way because different. you're yeah. asked to go out there, and well, I mean, I'll let you tell it. Like, what is your role when these yeah. overseas teams are are talking to you about signing you? Yeah, so overseas, my role is literally go kill. Like, go get a bucket. Like, <laughs> literally just go play and put this thing on your back. <laughs> like, last year, I averaged 40. We already talked this. I averaged 40 minutes. Like, yep. it doesn't matter if I turn the ball over three times, can't shoot no more, legs falling off. Like, you're playing <laughs> type. You need to play. <laughs> so, um, overseas, Ty, I kind of just... I mean, it's more free, I guess, and it's not a bad thing. It's nothing, no knock on WBA, no knock on nothing. It's more so something that I need to work on. Right. Because mentally in a space when I'm overseas, I feel like I'm more freer to do my game and play my game and play how I know how to play compared to the WNBA where it's like, okay, everybody's a superstar. Everybody can do this and you, yeah. 
just play your role and you you you're gonna get your minutes basically control what you can can control but yeah that overseas mentality tie is a dog it's I'm crazy sorry to say it's yeah dog. but i like it because it is like two different players which is actually mm-hmm. cool because mm-hmm. it shows that you can do both if a WNBA yeah. team ever wanted to say like hey ty we need you to be our scoring threat or whatever they, they yeah. you're capable of that um, obviously you are like a pure point guard, like a pure, yeah. like floor general. Like, I don't care how much I score. I'm going to yeah. make the right basketball play every time. Um, but it's cool to also see you do both. Um, yeah. Really- and, but not to cut you off, not to ahead, cut you off, ahead. but about the both thing and playing, playing styles. But that's another thing of, uh, I think people don't really realize in the league too. Like, I feel like the league is kind of, depending on what team you're on, it's systematic. So like, Oh, I know yeah. a lot of people. I know a lot of good players, great players who can play playground basketball, but can't play in like a structurized, yeah, you know, fundamentally sound. This is what I want to run type of team, and can't say they can't. But I'm just saying, like some people thrive in just playing free playground, go get a bucket, and right. some people thrive in a systematic. And that's that's a thing that I feel like I have both of. Like I can go play playground overseas. That's my playground, and WNBA is more systematic, under structure, and. Some people don't realize, like, there's two different things about that and 100%. how what contributes into making a team in the WNBA. For sure. And it's, yeah. and I will say, I wanted to give you a shout out. <laughs> I've been seeing a lot of threes going in this WNBA season. You dropping. Well, some- I just text my dad. <laughs> I said, Dad, not me coming from 15% overseas three point shooter <laughs> to a, a what, a 30 or 40 something yeah, now. 40 like, something now. You're like low 40s, high 30s, which right. is yeah, like, yeah, okay. Yeah. That means you're a shooter. You got the green light. <laughs> Shit, six months Overseas, ago, you couldn't get one to fall. Text you like, yo, J.O., I, I hit two threes today. It's a good day. <laughs> two for ten. <laughs> <laughs> Have 28 points, zero threes. <laughs> yo, this is crazy. We need to, oh, we need the internet people out there to pull up the stats on Ty overseas. It was It was getting treacherous out there. 32 but, points, one three. But like you <laughs> like, said, you're just, playing 40 minutes. So, like, yeah, yeah. man, I'm tired. Like, yeah, I cannot Exhausted. shoot from, from 25 feet out. Like, my, my legs are cooked. Not Was, to mention. Couldn't even throw a <laughs> ball in the ocean. Like, 15%. 15%. <laughs> you're was a, professional, a professional basketball player doing that is crazy. <laughs> my coach was making jokes like just like cracking up like oh, he just knew man. he'll be like Ty if you can make this three like we won't have practice today like <laughs> brick like could not hit it to save my life you got him falling now I love it I love to see it <laughs> um you were talking about uh just being a floor general and, and making the right basketball play in systems like yeah. me as a fan watching the game I'm always interested like what are the like the main actions or the most important actions that make a WNBA offense like run? Like, what are you, what are you trying to get your scores? Uh, what positions are you trying to get them in? Yeah. So I feel like what's crazy, what is crazy now that I'm figuring out the league, honestly, I just feel like everybody's going to say that. Oh, pick and roll. Honestly, I do think pick and roll game is a lot coverages and stuff like that. But the game does not change. When somebody tells you that, each level, the game does not change at all. You run the same play. 100%. You do the same drills. It's just quicker pace. Way faster, yeah. Quicker pace, more precise, just a quick reading. And I feel like that's the biggest thing because as I'm watching, like, Chelsea Gray, for example, last year in the finals, she's just getting to her spots. Yeah. It don't matter what play you call. Don't matter if you want to run an Iverson. Don't want to matter if you want to run a pick and roll, head tap, middle, whatever. She's getting to the elbow. If she has to back you down to get to it, she's just getting there, pulling up. And yeah. I'm like, that's that's a drill work right there. Like, I feel like that's what separates pros in like college and high school. Like the shot making ability. Oh, I totally agree. I was about to say like that. I feel like you know like defense like yes defense is a good thing but at the end of the day we're pros for a reason. Like you're you're supposed to make shots even with great defense in your face, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. So like I feel like that's that's what's the separation of everything from like each level. So when you say like what sets and what plays, I mean pick and roll obviously, screening action, side pick and rolls, iso work sometimes like if you're that player then you get like an iso situation mm-hmm. but other than that it's more so like Know your role. 
Yeah. Are you a kick out? Are you spacer? Driver? You do what you do best, basically. And so, as I'm watching Chelsea Gray, like, she's just getting to her spots. Like, great defense, but she's still making shots because that's she does that in practice. She yeah. does that in workouts. Like, she's, she doesn't care if their hand's in her face. Doesn't care if there's two people right there. She, she does re- not see She reps no. that. She, she reps that every you. day. So, like, yep. that's that's some normal stuff. So, I'm like, I'm thinking, like, last year my coach was like, just get to your spot. Do what you do best. And I think, like, that's the best advice. Because it's like, you do this. Like, you if, if you know you rep this every day in workout, why can you not do it in a game? Right. You know? So, I feel like that's the biggest key and aspect that I'm finding out now is honestly just like, oh, well, Ty, get to your spot and pull up. Yep. Because if you if you do that like you do it in workouts, I'm making 8 out of 10. But, like, now I'm thinking, like, oh, I'm in a game. It's special, like, a special situation. Now you, like, shooting 2 out of 10. Like, right. you know you're not going to get that many opportunities, but at the end of the day, it's the same jump shot. It's the same work you've been putting in, regardless if you're at workout or in the game. Yeah. So, like, we'll take overseas out of it because I know overseas, every spot on the floor yeah. is, is your spot. Yeah. But in the yeah. WNBA, what kind of spots are you trying to get to? Like, I, I like you coming off screens. Mm-hmm. Letting, you know, I, like, I like the same mid-range. Yeah. The mid-range. The mid-range game. I love that. I was a big mid-range in high school. Uh, set threes. But right now, this year is more so because the team I'm on, AT, she's like the floor general, the yeah, point guy, the triple screens. doubles. Yeah. I'm getting that spray out, so like I'm I'm focusing on the threes right now. But next year, I think I'm gonna do more so like pick and like pick and roll, middle ball screen, shooting behind screens if they're still going under, and then I automatically pull up elbow, pull up elbow, Chris there. Paul, like yeah. literally Chris Paul. Don't Love don't it. matter how I get there, if I get there, I'm pulling up type. I see it. I like it. That's mm-hmm. I love the mid range game. I mean, I think. That's it's like people art. say, yeah, it's funny because we were talking the other day. I forget who I was talking to. Um, damn. Anyway, we're saying, <laughs> you know, coaches want to want to just have threes or or don't. or, or uh, layups. Right. Yeah. Like layups are threes. But I'm mm-hmm. like, shit, if you get to your spot and you shoot the mid range, that's like a layup for a pro. Right. Like, right. Kevin Durant shooting from the elbow is a layup. Like right, I honestly say it'd probably be a higher percentage than a Demar layup. DeRozan. Yeah, there's crazy. no contest. Mid range is you know crazy. what I mean. Like you right. go to the rim, okay, yeah. Certain certain people need to finish at the rim, but you go mm-hmm. to the rim, there's going to be somebody there waiting for you. Mm-hmm. You get to the elbow, you're going to get, you're going to see like somebody's fingertips. That's it. Right, like you're shooting right over right. that. So, um, I think a layup, you know, is just a shot. You know how they say it's like these are layups. Like we, mm-hmm. we're shooting layups out here, so. It's going in. It doesn't matter if it's mid range, three, whatever. And everybody's not Steph Curry, okay? Like, a three is a layup yeah. for him. Like, I mean, a layup is a three for him. Everybody don't have to be Steph Curry. For like, sure. get to your spot. Like, if they right there on you, running off the three, I don't want to challenge you at the rim, boom, pull up. Like, it's hard It's hard to contest because, like, are you going to the basket? Right. Now I got you going to the basket. Now I stop and I'm pulling up. Like, yeah. Yeah. You got to be able to stop on a dime if right. you want to do that. Right. Um, I will say your your defense looking solid too. You look almost a steal per game. I'm bumping it up. Yeah, yeah. I'm bumping that up. Yeah, yeah. I like yep, that. yep, yep, yep. So let's talk about um, overseas real quick and just the dynamic okay. of being basically playing basketball professionally year round, which yeah. um, isn't great for your body. I would just say that, like, what? I mean, and I don't want to put you in a position where you feel like you have to complain or like talk right, about right, right. Like, all the bad oh, stuff. No, no. But I do want to, I do want to talk about like the grind. Like, what is it like yeah. where you're literally getting maybe a month off? And, and by off, I mean um, a month of where you have to also just work out and stay in shape because you got to go start right. a training camp. Like, what? Right. What is that like? That's that's grueling. Yeah, I mean. You know some of it because I come in for maybe two days and then be like, all right, yep, got to go, Justin. Yeah. <laughs> like, got to go again. <laughs> Great all season. I, was, I, <laughs> right. I saw you Monday see and you Tuesday. In, we got it in. See you in three months. Yeah. And I'll see you for another three days. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, so, I mean, you got to love it, honestly. And I think that's kind of like the difference between playing in the league and not – I mean, you mm-hmm. got to love what you do because we don't get – the glitz and glam. Honestly, my college days was way better than WNBA. Like, yeah. I flew charter. I got catered food every time. Like, I was getting taken care of. You know, now it's like you're independent by yourself and we're flying commercial. 
So like, <laughs> so it's not it's not as good as the college days, but it is in a different aspect. Yeah. But um, what was I even getting to? Just like the grind. We're just talking about oh, yeah, yeah. how just so wild like, it is. You gotta love it because after I feel like every year, depending how far you make it into the playoffs in the WNBA, is tells you your time where you gotta go overseas. True. So basically, if you play a full season of overseas, it's seven to eight months. Depending on what country you go to, some country you go five months, and then some people go like, I might go the first half, I might go the second half, depending. But like those are mainly the all stars who are mm-hmm. there, picking and choosing who have that luxury. But like other than that, you're going right after you get done with your WBA season. I think you can you can negotiate like two weeks maybe, but most people get like ten days, ten days to like two weeks to report overseas. So. After you get done with WNBA, wherever you are, I mean, you got to pack up all your stuff because you don't live there. You don't own an apartment. They buy it for you. So you pack up all your stuff. I usually send it to the crib at home. And then some of, like, the suitcases that I have already packed up, I just keep that same suitcase and just take it with me. Like, I'm like, there's no reason to unpack and pack it all up again. And so I just take all that. I usually have, like, four. I try to keep, like, three to four bags. My first year I had like five bags, four to five bags. But like as I go on each year, I know I don't even need that. Many yeah. clothes. You're not going nowhere. You're not seeing nah, nobody for real. So like you could recycle clothes. Who cares? So um, go over there, report, play about seven to eight months. Um, usually they want the Americans, since they are paying you a lot of money and they like have this big expectation of you, you do play a lot of minutes. Like I said, I was playing 40 minutes every game. Um you hold majority of like everything basically you like you run everything but the luxury of that is that they treat you so well over there cuz they do hold you to a high standard that mm-hmm. it's it's good cuz you feel like a celebrity like how how we're supposed to be felt in America is how we are felt in overseas basically got you and um but mine i feel like my story is a little different because a couple of the teams that i've been to wasn't like the greatest yeah. organizations over there so like i'll i'll, I'll be saying i've been in the trenches like yes. i went over there during the covid year my first year in turkey it was covid year and so they had them on lockdown yeah like from i want to say four to six a.m like everybody like all of the turkish citizens had to Damn. be in the house like store was closing like all that <laughs> stuff is going on i'm i'm just like stuff is locked down i'm just like this is crazy so all that happens. My next year, I go to Russia. The war happens. Yeah. And then uh, this past year, uh, the earthquakes was happening, and my teammate, her situation. So it's just a lot. Of, it's a lot of stuff that happens. And then, like, depending on what country you go to, sometimes you don't get Christmas break. You are you. Every country gets two breaks. It's the national team breaks. Mm-hmm. So you get like you get about ten days. But depending on how the schedule is, like so. Say if we have a game, like, the day the national team break is over. Like, they expect you to be back, like, four days before then. So, it's, like, really, you get six days. Right. And then, mind you, travel is already crazy. Like, it takes, like, 26 hours to get back to the crib. So, it's, like, you got to calculate all yeah, that into it's it. it's not so, even sometimes worth yeah. going. I think one year, I think only one year I got Christmas break, and I came home for Christmas at Russia. But my other years, I missed everything. Yeah. And then I got like two breaks for the national team break and then that is came wild. back for the like, WNBA season. Every time you go overseas, like some wild it's like, something like happened. COVID, obviously the I forgot about Russia. The something I'll never forget, which is why it's weird I forgot about it, is that like you told me about Brittany Griner and her situation, like before it came out. Because mm-hmm. you guys were both in Russia coming mm-hmm. home. And I yeah. was like that's fucked. And then obviously became the situation that it was, but I was just like, whoa, that's whoa, right. And it then was crazy. Earthquakes last year in, in Turkey. There's always some some wild stuff going on overseas. Like stuff you can't control. And like it's right. like it's not like I'm up the street from the house. Like you're thousands of miles <laughs> another away. side of the earth. Like for real. Like we're <laughs> no like different languages, different yeah. culture. Like it's crazy to even think about yeah, sometimes. What would you say is like one thing? This is gonna sound. I I don't want to get you in trouble. What yeah. would you say is one thing about overseas that makes you 
appre- that you appreciate about playing overseas versus maybe like something that might be missing from the W. Yeah. Um, like I said, how you are treated yeah. from like the fans and just like the staff and stuff like that, and then clearly money. <laughs> hey, it's, like, I feel like yeah. what I'm what I'm going through and what I'm <laughs> the trenches, all that yeah. extra. I'm getting from my money and now I'm yeah. saying like, all right, Ty, you can take this for it's another good. month. Yeah. All right, Ty, yeah. you can do it for another month. Like that keeps me going. That's you know? great. I mean, that, the people don't like to talk about that, but it's true. Yeah. Like, money, I mean, you're trying to make money for your family. Everybody knows because like, everybody yeah. knows. Here's a secret. America, Americans overseas. If that money don't go through, if that don't hit your bank account, oh, please. I'm not practicing. No. Yeah. <laughs> Won't be at that game. No. <laughs> I need my transfer wires to hit ASAP. right now in two to hours. The, to the bank ASAP. <laughs> two hours now, please. Yeah. So conversely, what's one thing about overseas that makes you super appreciate the W? Um, For me, because I'm like a homebody and I stay to myself and don't go too many places is um, just having the luxury of eating what I want to eat mm-hmm. when I like eating familiar stuff, seeing familiar so things, I heard, the routine of everything. <laughs> I heard one of your favorite restaurants, speaking of food, like I heard you're a huge fan of Hard Rock Cafe. <laughs> Heck, hell no. <nah. laughs> Why don't you explain that for us a little bit? <laughs> Justin, what? First off, we go there. There ain't nobody in the restaurant. Maybe one table. So I'm like, okay, order food. Takes an hour to get out. Like, I ordered a drink. Nobody at the bar. <laughs> Took 30 minutes to make. The drink was nasty. Food come out finally. I'm hungry. I'm smashing it. Get to the middle. I got fish, salmon. Get to the middle. I'm like, wait, why is this piece mushy? <laughs> Open the salmon up. Not cooked. Uh. Raw. Raw. So the guy's like, oh, yeah, like, we usually serve, like, medium rare. Da, da, da. I said, sir, this is still swimming in the ocean. Like, <laughs> this is not even, <laughs> I can't eat that. Like, I cannot eat that. Take that back. Oh, my so, God. like, yeah, no, nah, I won't go back. It's over with, with that. <laughs> so, yeah, right. just for a little, you know, insight, Ty's little sister, Talia, is currently <laughs> my intern. So... <laughs> I asked her this morning, like, I need some some embarrassing <laughs> stuff for Ty. And she told me about this horrible experience that you had at Hard Rock Cafe. That was my first time. I'm thinking, like, it's about to be nice. Like, I've, I've heard things about it here and there. No. No. Oh, man. I, I wasn't, wasn't even going to bring it up, but then it just, that just, you set me up for it. It was my mom's fault. She wanted to go so bad. I'm like, all right, we can just go, like, after the game. Everybody can eat. So her. did anybody enjoy their food? Or was it just bad across the across the table? Bad across the table. <laughs> just bad across the table. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to transition real quick into Under Armour. Um I mentioned yeah. I made a joke earlier about my Under Armour commercial, but <laughs> we did some cool stuff with Under Armour where they came out to the gym and like filmed us training and stuff like that. And I know yeah. uh SC is an Under Armour school. Um and now you have your deal with Under Armour. Like, what went into that? Were they following you through college and then kind of wanted you to be the, the face of the brand for the WNBA? Mm-hmm. Or like, what all goes into that? Yeah, so for a while, Under Armour wasn't in the WNBA. Like, no women basketball player wore their shoe. Mm-hmm. And so when, when COVID hit, my agent was just talking about, oh, like, shoe deals and stuff like that. Deals with just other partnerships with uh, businesses and stuff like that. And the WNBA is partnered with Nike. So if you don't sign to a shoe brand or whatever, you're supposed to just wear it, just Nike, whatever you get. You buy your own, whatever. And so he was saying, like, Nike is really going to only look for Sabrina since it was COVID year because they don't really need people. So Sabrina was the number one pick, so they looked at Sabrina. But he was like, um, we were just talking about other shoes. He mentioned some shoe, like a Chinese shoe line. Hmm. That he mentioned, um, I think it's the one that Kyrie was actually thinking about oh, going like to. Oh, like Anta, yeah, maybe? something like yeah. something, something over there about it. And I was like, oh, that's pretty interesting. And then um, he mentioned Under Armour, 
And so we got in contact with Under Armour. And finally, when we got in contact with them, they was like, oh, we've been, like, looking for your agent this entire time. Like, we wanted to get in contact with you first. He, they were saying um, this is their first year that they're trying to get back into the W and uh, have women sponsor their shoes and stuff like that and have a partnership. So it was kind of a no-brainer with me. Like you said, I wore yeah. Under Armour's four years in college. Uh, so it was something new. And then they were, like, just coming on scene so I wanted to be kind of like the front runner woman for that and um it kind of seemed like the best idea at that time and been with them since yeah I like their stuff I uh yeah I like their stuff a lot they they've got high quality stuff obviously in the fitness space like that's yeah one of the go-tos sure. and then now they're they're climbing the ranks in the basketball space too what do you think mm-hmm. like what's like next for you in Under Armour world like you got anything you can tell us about that you're working on um, right now, uh, I think it'll be better since this season coming up on this off season, I have a little more time. Can't speak too much into it, but I'll have a little more time. So I get to do a lot more. I know my first year when I signed with them, I was in a commercial shoot and, um, video shoots where there was in most of the storefronts and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. that was neat. I think they was talking about doing that again. And then obviously another player exclusive shoot that I'm thinking about. So that'll be in the works. And then once my WNBA career starts off and kicks off for real, for real, then maybe a signature shoe line. That'd be sick. That'd be yeah. dope. What would you call it? Let's let's just mm-hmm. uh, hypothesize that that happens. Like, what's your first shoe going to be called? The Ooh. Pearls. They don't know. <laughs> they don't know about that. They don't know about that that one. They don't know about the middle name. That might be it, though. (laughs) The pearls. Ooh, I need uh, 10% on that, please. Uh, All right, five. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, real quick, before I let you out of here, I want to throw you through the fire round. Um, All right, babe. Rapid fire, just some random questions about nonsense. Um, you can yeah. go as in depth as you want, or you can go one word answers, whatever you want. All right. All right. First one Do you believe in aliens? Uh, I believe there's something else out there, but I don't know if I want to call them aliens. Yeah. Something for sure yeah. is out there. Something. Something. Uh, what's your favorite movie of all time? Ooh. Do I want to be a basic person or do I want to be something? <laughs> no, you better say love and basketball. Gonna say the, huh? right, I ain't going to say the basic normal answer. Um, I have a lot of favorite movies. I like Blue Streak. I like Sandlot. Ooh. I like All the Fridays. I like... Yeah, we could leave it there. I ain't got to say too much. Yeah. Blue Streak, Sandlot. Those are... That's Fridays. Yeah. classics. All the Fridays. Mm-hmm. Love that. Mm-hmm. Um. All right, what's your most embarrassing basketball story? Mm-hmm. Most embarrassing. See, I don't even try to put myself in that situation. <laughs> okay, I can say now. I can say now. All right. This recently happened. I played against Dallas against Enrique. Coming off a screen. I slipped on my foot, but <laughs> as soon as I fell... She crossed back over, and if you see the video, it does look like she broke me off something so bad. Mm. But you know, I know what really happened. But the whole video went out there. She posted it and Ooh. stuff like that. So how did that feel? I just gotta coming, take the L. coming from a former teammate. Like what was what was that? Did she text you after the game? Like yo, she did. And she texted me before she posted. She's like. I'm sorry I got to do this to you. I wish it was somebody else, but <laughs> we laughed about it. I said, you know good or what I fell on my foot. She was like, I'm already knowing. But it looks like she crossed me, so I just got to take the L. All good. I just have to take it. Good. Yeah, yeah. Well, you ain't the only one when it comes mm-hmm. to her. She's mm-hmm. she's one of them ones She's nasty, sure. yeah. Yeah. Um, what inspires you? Uh, my family. If you could eat one food for the rest of your life with no impact on your health, what would it be? Seafood boil. Oh, hell yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a great answer. That's hey, actually yeah. not a bad answer. I, I like can that. pick through whatever one, change, you know, change the bag up. I mean, really, you get good protein, vegetables, you know, like it's veggies in there. That's not the worst I've hey. heard. That's hey. solid. 
Oh, I like this one. If you were not a hooper, what would you be doing right now for a living? I would say track, but track is the only sport that really makes me nervous. Like, I get so nervous in track, really? but I feel like it's because I know, like, that I can lose by it. This yeah, just, yeah <laughs> like, it's that not. Sucks. It's not. It's, it's not even like you know. Yeah. it's either close or you get smoked. So you can genuinely think you won a race for like right. two minutes until you find <laughs> out you didn't win. For a fact, yeah. But so you're saying you'll be an athlete for sure. You yeah. just be a track for athlete sure. instead. For sure, yeah. I like that. I love track. Yeah, I ran track in high school. All right, this is crucial, critical, top secret information. Mm-hmm. What? temperature do you have your thermostat set at oh my god are we gonna think differently about you after this 70 okay that's not that's not horrible that's not horrible but i feel like i'm anemic like i get so cold everybody's like oh 68 67 60 i i can't go into the 60s if really perfect grow i'll say 72 yeah oh see now you lost me (laughs) You lost me on that. 70 is uh, an acceptable answer. It's mid, right? It's mid. 70 it's is mid. an acceptable answer. I'm a 70 family because uh-huh. well, I'm a 68 guy. But That's too cold. But the way my house is set up, yes. it's like different in certain areas. Mm-hmm. And it's mm-hmm. like we've just found that 70 keeps it like the most consistent. For, but, yeah, all the areas. But Perfect. yeah, 70 is cool. 72, I don't know. I blame my family though, because that air conditioning does not come on. <laughs> if it doesn't have to come on, it's not coming on. My nah, dad said you better open up a window. <laughs> Put the box fan in the window. Man. Um, all right. So if we talk about you pregame, like what's mm-hmm. on your pregame playlist? You can go artist or a specific song. Okay. Um, depending how I feel and like what time of day the game is, sometimes I like to go chill. So I play like R and B or slow, just relaxing songs. And then if I wanna, you know, turn up, you got a little baby, gonna Yeah. Gun thug, the usuals. Is there like uh, one is there like one song that just gets you too hype? Like you just listen to it and it's go time. Um overseas, it was the uh the Drake album. You know what I'm talking oh, about? Oh, yeah. The, the one we, yeah, with the yeah, girl's yeah. face on it? Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. I'm drawing a blank on that. What is it? Her loss. Her loss? Her loss, yeah. yeah Her yeah, loss. Yeah, 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 that yeah. was tough. Yeah. All right. Who's your Mount Rushmore of women's basketball players? Ooh. How many is it? Four or five? Four. <clears throat> well, I got to put Don. Got to put Don up there. For sure. Lisa. Maya. One left? One left. So many names to choose from. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. I I picked older ones, so I'll go to a more recent one. I got to go half and half, Asia or Stewie. Yeah. Asia is... She's 53? Yeah, she's she's crazy. Come on now. She might go down as the best ever. She, She could. Come on now. She's doing crazy. And Stewie things. though, and Stewie. Stewie's yeah. all I want to. Mm. That's tough. Mm-hmm. The I would put the only one that I would put. This is tough. This always gets mm-hmm. messed up because there was no WNBA when she played. Cheryl Miller was yeah. going crazy. Scored a hundred yeah. in high school. Yeah. What used to terrorize Reggie Miller, who turned out to be like one of the best, you know, hundred players in the league history. Like, mm. yeah, she's up there for sure. But it's hard because like there was no. There's so many Cynthia I'm Cooper, sure. Tarika yeah. Weatherspoon, all yeah. of them. That's wild. Our right, last one here. When you got to the W, who was the first person to just bust your ass? Like, what was your welcome <laughs> to the W NBA yeah. moment? Um, luckily, honestly, I didn't get too many. Like, just somebody busting my ass for real. Because, one, I felt like the best person to bust my ass was Arike, and I was on her team for three, practice, eight, three yeah. years. You know what I mean? So, like, mm-hmm. that was cool. Um, but the first one to welcome me is DT, Diana Taurasi. 
She hit me. She hit me so good on one of these screens. She was trying to post up. Oh, she luckily a, she got the foul. Yeah, but boy, 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 boy. And you caught boy. her at the end of her career too. End and she of, was, yes, thank God. She was trying. To, she was like doing the little things so well, right. like screens right. and shit like right. that. That yes. Oh that, my god. That can get hit. Like that yeah. can go hidden for real. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, last one. This isn't really a question, but just anything you want right. to plug, anything you want to, you know, share with the people. Where can we find you? Anything you got coming up? Just this is your time. This is your elevator pitch right here. Well, y'all can follow me on Instagram, bar her underscore fix two. I think my Twitter is Ty Harris underscore fix two, something like that, somewhere around right there. Um, make sure y'all get y'all Under Armour merch. Make sure y'all go train with my boy J O, <laughs> the best trainer out, the drippiest trainer out. <laughs> yeah, we gonna have some fun this off season though. I can't we gotta wait. Talk. I gotta text you. Oh God, yeah. I can't wait to see yeah. you. No, for, for real. Like this, this will be our first time ever for real having like like a full off season. Yeah, I can't like, wait. We like I want to take some like before pictures and some. Oh after pictures, yeah, like, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we yeah, got yeah. yeah yeah we coming for some hardware next year yeah we coming yeah, for yeah, some yeah. hardware next year thank you for joining yeah. me I appreciate you no problem thank you for having me yep and that was another episode of the gym sessions podcast with special guest Ty Harris hopefully you guys enjoyed that if you're new here make sure you like subscribe share this episode I encourage you to go back to previous seasons and previous episodes and check out some of our previous work. If you are a continual supporter, thank you so much for tuning in. Could not make this show what it is without you guys. Make sure you share this with a friend, like it, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and we will see you guys next week for another great interview and great episode.